Good afternoon, AI fans, and welcome back to Databricks Data and AI Summit here in San Francisco. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by John Furrier for this very swaggy segment we're about to have. <laughs> Man, I feel like we've learned so much, and everyone's so pumped about good data this week. You know, this is going to a hats off session for this <laughs> one. Um, we are going to take. We are going to talk about unstructured data. My favorite topic: retrieval, augmentation, generation. Vector databases, yeah. all of my favorite topics. Got, <laughs> I mean, I can tell. Here. I can tell. I can tell by your glee just hats how off, excited baby. you hats are. Hats off. <laughs> and poor Andrew. Andrew had no idea. Well, first of all, welcome, Andrew. Welcome Thank to the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy to be here. Poor Andrew had no idea he was going to be on the show today until we went over and charmed you because delightful surprise for today. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. Yeah. So context for the audience. When I walked on the show floor yesterday, I'm always looking for my swag for the Savvy Swag segment, and I saw your hats, and all of a sudden I thought, wait, did I just walk into some cool hipster clothing store, <laughs> or am I at a nerd conference? Because this is really dope. I love that all the hats, y'all can see so many different styles of unstructured. We got hot dogs, we got flowers, we got popsicles, jello, we got tigers. I mean, really, really just loving it. Like you said, if anything ever happens to Unstructured, you can go straight into the branding business. That is our backup. But for real, before we get into the meat of the tech, how, how did you make sure that the brand at the company was as cool as it is? Because so many other tech companies just miss it. They sure do. I mean, we just have genius marketers. Uh, Staff at Adam Marketing is a genius. She has a great team underneath there. And I think it fits with, uh, with the uh, motif of our company. Like, this is all different structures, different colors, and no matter what it is, we can structure it. And that's the kind of point of our company, is that we take all of the messy data and we transform it into a uniform JSON. So that kind of means we can have a lot of fun with our branding and put out all kinds of stickers and hats out there, so. Yeah, I mean, even the team. long sleeves, uh, the whole thing yeah. is just, <laughs> is this the original logo? No, no, there was a different one, um, I think like a year ago, but this has been the logo for a while, for sure. Has it felt really good to see, because literally everyone's wearing the hats, has it felt oh. good to see them everywhere? I think our marketing team is having a blast. That's for these last few months. I mean, they're so creative, every conference, and I'm going to conference every few weeks. We have new hats, new stickers. It's, it's been really fun. Yeah, really that fun. is great. So just in, in case folks aren't as familiar as we are, both with your hats as well as the company, tell us about Unstructured. Certainly, so Unstructured has been around for not quite two years, and we like to call ourselves the ETL for RAG. And um, as I'm sure your audience knows, like RAG, Retrieve Augmented Generation, where you have your model, orchestration, and a vector database. Um, we actually don't really mess with any of that directly. What we're about is getting people access um, of their unstructured documents into those vector databases. So we process 35 different file types. It could be PDFs, Word, PowerPoint, whatever it is. You put it into unstructured, it's like a wood chipper. We turn it all into JSON, and it comes out chunked and wrapped in metadata. So you basically pick the vector database of your choice and uh, you're off to the races. Smiling at the wood chipper, my whole family's from the Midwest and so Fargo hits home for us very, very <laughs> much. And anytime someone says the word wood chipper, I'm just totally derailed. In, in, in. <laughs> that should be one of our hats we come out for next conference. Yes, and I yes. need one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we'll send you one. Yeah, I, I definitely need one if that's the case. The wood chipper of data, that, oh my gosh, that's absolutely, that's wild. Yeah. I can imagine you're pretty popular right now then. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. We feel like the popular kids on the block, for sure, at all these conferences. Uh, it's because we're dealing with, honestly, kind of like the unsexy part of AI and RAG, and a lot of our users and customers, a lot of, I mean, uh, Fortune 500 companies are coming to us, and they have, they've spun up these new AI and Gen AI teams, even if they've been around for like a year or so, um, these really smart individuals that are trying to figure out the difficult problems of orchestration and what vector database and um, retrieval strategies, and um, those are really tough questions that people are wrestling with, and they don't really want to spend the time data, like wrangling the data, right? They, and they want to do the testing on actual proprietary um, unstructured data of these enterprises. So that's where we come in as like the easy button, don't worry about those data pipelines. We'll, we're, you, we're open source too, so you can test with us really easily, get those um, that data converted into JSON and then do your POCs. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about vector databases and vector embeds. Obviously neural networks is different than the way it was before with keywords and you know, the normal ways to interpret. Sure, sure. So the question people come up with is that everyone's got a vector database now. I mean, yeah. Every I mean, next every day is a new announcement. Mongo's got one. Everyone's got Milfus has one. What is the relationship between the database and the actual neural network piece of it? The the the, the math behind 
the, uh, um, the structured data? Is there, does it, do they rely on each other or is it independent? Yo, that's a very good question. That's beyond my pay grade, John. I, I couldn't tell you the exact relationship between the, the math and neural network and the vector database. I, I think we're, when it comes to databases, we just try to play nice with anyone downstream. Like we're very agnostic. So um, we have built-in connectors to, to all the ones that your audience knows, top 10, 15 popular ones, and you can bring in your own. Um, and I think with our customers, we're trying to get a little more opinionated about lining up what vector databases, what embedding models, what retrieval strategies work best with what use case or desired outcome, and we we are betting that there's going to be a kind of a plethora of different best use cases, right? If you're in one industry, perhaps a different vector database will be better for your kind of data and use case, and if you're in a different industry or a different line of business, yeah. uh, maybe it's a different answer over here, so we'll, we'll we're so trying to figure that out. So your wood chipper works with all, whatever connectors, <laughs> That's the they idea. would pop them in, okay, got it. Yeah, on. yeah, we're trying to be agnostic <laughs> downstream. Doesn't matter who's throwing, throwing the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> lumber in there, geez, I'm going to, sorry, it's, I'm ruined, I'm absolutely ruined. <laughs> For this He's segment off the now. Rail. No, no. He's <laughs> off the rails on this it's one. It's great. We're at Databricks. Tell us a little bit about the partnership. You're the partnership manager. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Databricks have been fantastic. I mean, they invested us. They're part of a Series B a couple of months ago. Um, they're one of our key partnerships. Uh, honestly, I, I'm a partnership manager at Unstructured, and I spend most of my time thinking about Databricks and talking to them. Um, so, like very simply, we connect with them upstream and downstream. Um, probably more useful the downstream. So, getting unstructured data wherever it is: S3 buckets, blob storage, Google Drive and getting it into Databricks. Um, we, uh, it was announced today too, we uh, are compliant or integrated with their uh, Unity, catalog, Unity catalog, UC volumes. And so we're one of the early uh, partners to, to align with those. So uh, they're, they're coming out, they have their models, they have uh, vector search capabilities. Yeah. So we think that, um, that customers together with us, Databricks will be able to crack some of these Gen AI problems. I love that. What's yeah. it like having them both as a partner and as an investor? Oh, we get a lot of attention, to be honest. They, they treat us really well. <laughs> they treat us really well. Honestly. Databricks has been fantastic. Um, some of the greatest champions we have um, uh, are in Databricks, and they're stopping by our booth. They're excited to see us. Uh, they show us a lot of love. So. That's great. Yeah. And open source, you mentioned open source, big part of the community, big emphasis on the show. Yeah. Why is that so core to, to Unstructured? Well, developers are like our main audience, right? It's a very technical um, uh, product that we're, we're creating or products that we're creating. Um, we started open source two years ago. We have, I think, over 10 million downloads of our uh, Python package library so far. We're nice. At, um, I think it's a 1.2 million per month now is what we're up to, downloads. So uh, that's a growing community that, uh, that we love and, and people are constantly coming by the booths here saying that they use us all the time to solve problems. Um, they so, just said that because they want a hat. <laughs> oh, I'm we give we give hats to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys based out of? Is there one place or is uh, we're fairly like? modern? We're we're uh, remote. I'd say the two biggest clusters would be uh, the Bay Area and then uh, Virginia, DC. We do some uh, a lot of federal work. Uh, I myself in Seattle. We got people in New Zealand and Europe. So love that we're, go we're a modern country. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. That's rad. That's that's fun. How big is the team? About fifty-five people now. And wow. growing. You're flexing for that size in a good way. Yeah, yeah. That's rad, yeah. keeping it lean and tidy. How, how much have you raised? Uh, 65 so far, 65 million. Right. What are the partnerships around the horizon? People. You got Databricks, nice. take us through I the like partnership the ecosystem for you. Sure, yeah, uh, MongoDB is a, a key partner for us as well. Uh, I mean, we have to play with the, um, the, the cloud providers out there. Microsoft was an early investor, so that's a crucial partnership. AWS, Google, all the usual players. And then a lot of uh, the key vector st uh, stores out there, so um, Pinecone, Weaviate, all of those. Oh, cool. Um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a crazy world out there in the AI ecosystem, so we're trying to, trying to play nice with everyone. Is Milvis on the list? Oh, of course, okay. of course. All right, cool. <laughs> He'll list anyone you want to play nice with. I totally get that. You, 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 you mentioned that though, and, and, and we've talked about it a bit on the show. It, it seems like with the Gen AI revolution, there's a lot more collaboration than we've seen before as everybody tries to navigate how to figure sure. it out. I do think, and confirm or deny this, you can have your own opinion obviously, but I'm wondering, so we're starting to see things start to parse in one direction or another. We're starting to see some really core allegiances, Company is going head to head, it's starting to get a little dicey here. Uh -huh. Is that, yes. are you seeing something similar? Sure, sure. I think people are starting to get a little more opinionated. I think people that initially came into market as saying we're just doing vector data, database offerings and they're moving a little bit of right to the database or a little bit left, and so people are trying to kind of uh, offer more full rag packages. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's still early to say who's winning in what area and why. 
but yeah, it's, it, things are changing rapidly, and like the, even just the, the conversations we're having with our customers this month is very different than the conversations we're having two months ago, and radically different than six months ago. So everyone's just learning as fast as they yeah. can, and uh, and it's it's real evolving. What are, what very are the quickly. biggest differences in those conversations? Well, so I mean, six months ago, not not many people knew what Rag was, so it was a lot of like educating our own customers, and and they're saying, hey, we think we need to be using Rag. Can you help us? Um, and now everyone knows what Rag is. Yeah. Uh, everyone's spun up at least a couple of proof of concepts, and we're getting to with some of our customers. Uh, passive POC, getting up into production, and now dealing with like real economic issues of like, okay, we can get it running, we get it working, it's very useful, it's very powerful, but how do we make it so it doesn't break the bank when we let all of our yeah. 10,000 users uh, uh, hit our, our RAG application 10 times a day? Like that could be a very, very huge bill. So we're getting a little more into the weeds, more, a little more sophisticated with, with where we're at. Awesome. It, that AI literacy and data literacy, what you just hit on there with having to educate the customer. It is nice to hear you feel like things are coming to a level now. Are, are you seeing people move into to not just experiments, but into a much larger environments and, and at scale? Sure, sure. I mean, everyone's in a different, uh, some people are more ahead and some people are further behind. I mean, people are starting their AI journey every day mm -hmm. and we're having initial conversations. But yeah, we definitely have people that are standing up multiple uh, production level uh, uh, applications. So, um, yeah, people all over the place. Seeing it across the board, that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. That, yeah, wow, what, a, what an exciting time. What about, it's obviously an exciting time for the company, what yes. about our AI future excites you personally the most? Uh, it's, it seems to me as like a, a really core technology that has the power to disrupt a lot of different industries and, and by disrupting businesses in almost every kind of business unit within a company, right? Like from totally. HR to sales to product <laughs> development to consumer goods to research to, I mean, I mean, it, it literally is a, it just kind of seems to be like a fundamental shift of technology for a society that has like, I mean, the sky's the limit yeah. for the implications. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff. Like, and our, honestly, our customers that come to us are the ones that are really um, uh, showing the power of AI because they, they come to us with the ideas. They're like, hey, we want to build a RAG application that does X, Y, Z, and no one, I've never heard that before. And so it's really inspiring to have those yeah. conversations and like kind of lean in and say, great, how would we build this? How do we stand this up? You get to see the future first. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. It's, it's so cool. fun. We feel that way on theCUBE here yeah. too as we talk to wonderful, brilliant believe, people I like bet. you. I yeah, it's, it's, it's a master class in itself sitting here sometimes. I'm, sometimes I find myself taking notes, like, oh, I'm going to have to go back and learn more about that. And it's like, <laughs> right, pay attention to the guest. Hold 100%, on. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just immediately go into student mode and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good vibe. What's next for you guys? Well, uh, next week we're, we're launching Unstructured Serverless. Uh, June 20th, so uh, that's going to be one of our premium offerings. So it's going to be a lot of the same core offering of uh, our open source, but a little bit uh, more premium versions of our models. So we're just going to be a little more accurate, a little faster. Um, and then uh, around the corner this summer is our enterprise platform. So that's going to be our full like GUI uh, and then detail offering. Wow. So that's going to be that's going to be huge. Wow! We're very excited for that. Yeah, thanks. That's so thanks. cool. All right, Andrew, because you've been so great on the show already, I'm sure we'll have you back. What do you hope to be able to say? You talked about how quickly the conversation rate is changing with your customers and in general, I'm sure even at the booth. What do you hope to be able to say this time next year that you can't yet say today? I think I would like to get a more specific answer to your question of what is AI doing for our customers and for the future. Like I want to see not just these POCs getting up starting production level, I want to see what the impacts have been across the board. Like I just think the whole yeah. society is going to be more mature in their AI journey as a whole. And I'll tell you where we are as a part of that nice. in a year. I love that. We, look, right. we can't wait for it. Andrew, thank Confident you for answer. thank you for squeezing us in. To what's yeah, thank you so much week. for having me. All right. Yeah, Appreciate this, has been, this All right. has been a pleasure. And thank you and your whole marketing team. Shout out to the marketing team. Yeah. You nailed it. That's how you ended up on the show. So you all deserve a pat on the back and whatever beverage you would like to consume. At least in my opinion. John, thank you as always right. for making sure we make the magic happen and invite fabulous folks like Andrew on the show. And thank you for tuning in to our fantastic Power Packed two days of coverage here. Databricks. A AI, excuse me, <laughs> we are at Databricks AI Summit. My goodness, it has been a mouthful today. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.